What's up everybody? My name is Bobby. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this guy right here. The Anchor 622 Magnetic Mag Go Battery Pack. Now before we get into the video, this is not sponsored by Anchor in any way. They didn't send me this product for free. I went out and bought this with my own money. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, you know I'm a big fan of MagSafe accessories and I've done a lot of reviews on magnetic MagSafe batteries in the past. This one seemed to be getting a lot of attention over the last couple weeks, so I wanted to pick one up and do a review for you guys, and I will also be including it in my future MagSafe showdown where I kind of put it up against all the most popular options on the market at the moment. So if you're interested in this kind of video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out and then that way you'll be able to see that future video as soon as it does go live. So jumping right into it, this guy will set you back $60 and it comes in five different color options. The battery itself is a 5,000 milliamp battery and it'll charge your phone, I believe at 7.5 watts. And kind of the biggest selling point for this particular guy is the magnetic uh, flap that's on the back of it. So essentially when it's attached onto your phone like so, as you guys can see, it's magnetically attached to your phone. You can go ahead and take this like really thin flap and kind of fold it into a stand so you're able to prop your phone up, say you're in the you know break room or you know, you're just waiting around for like an appointment or something like that. It basically gives you access to a stand in, you know, portrait mode or landscape mode. That's kind of their big selling point and the little bit of extra functionality that you're getting when you pick up one of these guys. To charge it on up, it does actually take a USB-C cable, which is super convenient. And then if you decide you want to charge up other devices with a wired cable, because you are able to not only wirelessly charge, but charge it with plugging a cable into it, It'll be a USB-C out to whatever device you're trying to charge. If it's an iPhone, it'd be like a USB-C to Lightning or an Android phone. It could be, you know, USB-C to USB-C. Whatever it may be, that's the port that it has on it. This guy also does have LED indicator lights to let you know how much charge is left in the battery pack itself. And the power button that's on it is very clicky and easy to, you know, turn on the device when it is connected to your phone. So, like I mentioned earlier, the biggest selling point for this particular guy is that foldable flap on the back, in my opinion. There also are a couple other cool features that I noticed, but I'll touch on those in a minute. But essentially, this flap on the back, like I said, um, it magnetically stays flush, very flush to the actual battery itself. It's actually surprisingly flush. Like when I first saw this design, I thought, you know, when you run your fingers around that edge, you'd be able to lift up the flap or it would get kind of inconvenient or you feel like it might add some bulk to it. It's honestly super, super thin and it stays very tight up against the actual battery pack itself. So when you have it in your pocket or something like that, you don't have to worry about it, you know, catching on any fabric or something along those lines. Really the only way to kind of pop it out is there's a very tiny little open flap up at the top that when you it gives you enough of a pull tab to kind of actually lift it up it's pretty nice the stand itself when your phone is connected to it it's pretty sturdy the MagSafe strength is pretty secure it's not the strongest I've felt it's definitely not the weakest I've felt um, it is it, it'll hold your phone there solidly even if you give the table a little shake it's not gonna tip it over um, I wouldn't you know smack your phone while it's on there or anything like that or bank on it like holding on to it no matter what but as far as what the purpose is is just having it you know hold your phone up while you're trying to you know eat lunch or something and watch some content of some sort it'll do that very nicely now the flap that I mentioned I did say it was very thin um, I'm curious how this holds up over time especially for people who use it very regularly when I say it's thin, I mean it's really, really thin. It feels almost like paper thin. The little magnetic portions in it do feel sturdy and give it some like rigidness to it, if you will. But the actual like, uh, I don't even know what to call it, like the fabric or the mesh that's holding it all in there together, that stuff is pretty thin. And I'm curious, you know, after a thousand, you know, unfold, fold, unfold, fold. I'm curious to see how it stands up, but at least in my, you know, initial testings, it seemed to be quite durable. As for the battery itself, the entire outer shell of it is in this very smooth kind of silicone feeling 
texture, if you will. So if you're the kind of person that likes a silicone iPhone case or something like that, you'll really enjoy this, you'll feel right at home. For me personally, I like leather a lot more. I don't like the way silicone feels in my hand. I don't like the way it gets dirty over time. So I'm curious to see how like this one in the lighter colors um, that they have available. I'm curious to see how those look after, you know, year, a year or two of use, just because the silicone iPhone cases get really dirty and kind of look grimy after time. They don't really look better with age, similar to how leather does. So I'm curious to see how this looks. Um, as far as the texture, if you like this kind of smooth silicone feel, you'll like this. If you don't, you probably won't. As for the size of the battery, it is a little bit thicker than Apple's MagSafe battery, but you are getting a bigger battery. So there's that. It is very thin though, especially with the actual you know stand that's built into it. Um, it's kind of hard to find one that has a stand that's thinner than this. It feels like a very good size. You can still hold it one-handed, um, you know, make calls, text. It, it almost adds actually like an extra grip to the back of your phone. So if you have like a Pro Max, for example, or like a bigger iPhone that's a little awkward in the hand because it's so large, having this little protruding battery almost kind of gives it an extra grip. I probably wouldn't bank on it being, you know, the end all be all of holding your phone tightly to it. But as far as just kind of like quick usage, this feels more natural in the hand than a big old iPhone. So there's something to be said for that as far as like the size and the proportion of the way it fits in your hand. So one of the big things that they boast with this, at least on their website, is what they call a multi-port technology that essentially adds kind of like an overload protection and an advanced temperature control system. It kind of adds some extra protection that I haven't seen other batteries other than maybe Apple's boast about. So that I was very interested to check out. And lo and behold, I did notice it firsthand. So while they mentioned this kind of uh, heat protection technology on their website at the same time, they do have a disclaimer that the nature of this kind of technology is it will generate heat. And so it was kind of weird to see them, you know, mention that you will notice some heat from the battery. And then at the same time, there's kind of like an overload protection and a temperature control protection. So it was kind of this weird, like, you know, double-edged sword that I noticed, at least when I was reading up on the specs. And what I found was that when I was using the battery, the charging speed, definitely faster than Apple's, but it's 7.5 watts. It's not that fast in the general scheme of it. it. I think it's definitely meant to be more of like a trickle charge. But what I did notice was that it started to heat up in my pocket when I was out and about doing whatever it was I was doing. Um, and I would periodically pull it out to kind of see how much it had charged up, to really feel how hot it had been getting. Um, and when I pulled it out one of these times, so it had been kind of warming up for a little while, I pulled it out, my phone wasn't charged all the way up, the battery was on, there, it wasn't dead, there was still plenty of juice in the battery, but I noticed it wasn't charging my phone anymore. And so I think when they kind of talk about temperature control and overload protection, um, with a lot of these other MagSafe batteries, a lot of times you'll notice them getting scorching hot and they don't really care to protect any sort of thermals or anything like that. They just keep it going until the phone's fully charged. With this one, it appears that it stopped charging it to prevent it from getting any hotter. And potentially, you know, I, I didn't notice it when it kicked back into gear essentially, but I did notice that as soon as it started getting too warm, it stopped charging. Now the unfortunate thing about that is it hadn't charged my phone up that much. So whether or not you feel, I don't know, the more I try more and more of these things, there doesn't seem to be a really great solution yet. Like I've tried probably 10 different MagSafe batteries, Apple's all the way down to tons of different solutions, and they'll do the job, but none of them are perfect. So you really have to kind of gauge what it is that is important to you. This one was a pretty interesting in-between, whereas like Apple's will charge your phone super, super slow to do, you know, all that thermal regulation and protect your phone from getting too hot. Apple's is the only one that I've noticed doesn't get hot at all. This was probably the second best though, in my opinion, because while it did get warm, it wasn't as hot or even close to as hot as other batteries that I've tested. And then on top of that, it had that kind of protection mechanism in place where it stopped charging it to re you know, reduce the amount of heat it was generating. 
So it was kind of interesting to notice that, but you know, again, it stopped charging my phone. So for what that's worth, say you needed every single last drop of battery, if your phone gets too hot, this guy just wouldn't charge your phone. I don't really know if there's a way to override it. Every time I make a video like this, there's people in the comments who know way more about this stuff than I do. So I really appreciate kind of any insight, if any of you know why it is that it did that, but it's just something I figured you should be aware of. Overall, I found this to be a really, really great option in my opinion. You know, you get, a little bit more functionality than you would typically get if you went and picked up apples and it is cheaper um, and it is a little bit safer i would say in my opinion than some of the other third party options i am excited to compare this to all the other models that i've been kind of getting in slowly and like i kind of mentioned earlier there isn't really a perfect solution that i've noticed for this type of technology yet but i feel like you know anchor taking the initiative to implement something like that to regulate the heat is kind of a step in the right direction as far as uh, MagSafe charging technology goes because eventually we are moving to a world where there won't be ports and we'll be doing everything wirelessly and I think these incremental steps that lead to a big change over time similar to like what happens with iPhones where it's kind of like a little update each year but then you know you look down the road and all of a sudden we've made huge leaps and bounds in just the last five years. I think it'll be a similar thing with MagSafe and a step like this, I think is important to get to that place. So um, if you wanna be rocking with MagSafe in the meantime, before it gets to that kind of perfect zone, if you will, I think this is a great option. For 60 bucks, I can definitely recommend it, especially if you're okay with the you know things that I mentioned here. But yeah, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. If you guys have any questions, please shoot me you know any sort of comment I would really appreciate it and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions if you've got some value from this video and you want to see my upcoming comparison videos uh, be sure to subscribe anyway thank you guys for watching I appreciate it more than I can say and I'll see you in the next one